If you could change any choices you have ever made, would you? You can always make another choice and change the course of your success. Everyone has the potency to make inspired choices. Get ready to listen, share, and experience the creativity that is you. Now, here is the host of Inspired Choices Radio Show, Christine McIver. Welcome, 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 my friends. Yes, I am Christine McIver, your host of the Inspired Choices Show here on the Inspired Choices Network. And I am so excited about today's show because it's not something we talk a lot about and it's not something that we actually look to really unpack and see what's going on. And yet, as a business owner, as a service provider, as a product producer, as a creative person who is in any way in the area of having customers or clients, it's something we all desire deeply but we're not looking at it. So today we're going to look deeply at it and I'm excited to talk to you about it. So tonight we are talking about, we are talking about cultivating loyalty in your business and loyalty is all about customers and clients and businesses. It's, it's, it's absolutely one of the most important conversations to date that I think we're going to be having. So If you are someone that is new to my show, thank you for coming back again. Thank you for joining us here actually in the live studio, or if you're listening in the replay, you've clicked on any of the 250 different places where you can find our shows on demand. Thank you so much for doing that. And if you're brand new to the show, Inspired Choices, I would really love to welcome you and invite you to really be willing to be challenged, be willing to be open up to something different. Be willing to actually see what else is possible in your world. And we're going to dive right into this show. I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am a, I'm a business owner. I am a professional host. I've been doing my own show, uh, audio show, and then advanced into TV since 2011. I love doing these shows. And I'm also a strategic business coach. I work with individuals and organizations really looking to what do they desire to grow into. If you're someone, it doesn't matter where your business is at, if you are someone or you're an organization that desires to grow and desires to be even more and wants to be challenged. Because, you know, as being a coach, the reason that coaches actually began is because the CEOs the C-suite of individuals in organizations, they didn't have anyone that would challenge them. Their employees wouldn't challenge them for fear of being fired. And probably lots of the egos of the CEOs didn't want to be challenged by their employees or didn't want to become vulnerable about what's not working. And that's where coaches actually began working, is really being in that arena. So if you're someone who is not great with being vulnerable with people around you, but you absolutely know it's time for you to grow, this is the show for you. This is where I'm going to challenge you. And if you want to work with me, you can count on the fact that I am going to challenge you because your desire, most individuals' desires when they come to work with me is they want to grow. They want to have more abilities in their life. They want to have greater relationships. They want to be happier. Well, you know what? As long as you're in your status quo and you keep doing the same things over and over again, that's not going to be possible. The only way it's going to be possible is if you are willing to be challenged. So if you're willing to be challenged, let's keep going with today's show. So what we are talking about today is cultivating loyalty in your business. Businesses challenge, business challenges rather often weigh us down as business owners, right? There, there seems to be a lot of different challenges. What if each and every one of us, we're willing to cultivate business loyalty between ourselves and all of our clients. I wonder what that would actually change for your business, for you, for your bank account, or even for your clients and your customers. I wonder what that would change. Loyalty is more than sales, and it's more than being popular. It's a lot more than that. Many of the most successful companies in the world build their reputation first 
through the vital step of loyalty. So imagine having clients and customers who think of you and your organization when it comes to your area of expertise. What does that feel like for you? How does that really land for you as, as a business owner? Is that something that you've actually thought about? Is that something that you're actually willing to look at and willing to actually be with? This is so important and I'm super excited to share this with you. So let's look at, you know, if you, you've been here before, you know that I oftentimes we are going to look at the original definition of the word that we're discussing today. And today we're talking about loyalty. So loyalty is to be loyal, to have legitimacy, honesty, and good quality, right? This word was first uh, created in the 1400s. It's a noun. And it, you know, some of the things that really popped for me, it, they're talking about it's a matter of principle and the oath of allegiance. Just think about that. To have allegiance to something, to take an oath. So my very first question to all of the business owners out there or the wannabe business owners out there, are you willing to take to swear allegiance to your customers and your clients? Are you willing to do that? Most of us business owners, when we're looking at loyalty, when we're looking at building you know, customers, repeat customers. That's what we talk about. Repeat customers, repeat customers. Well, where's the focus, right? It's on the repeat and it's on them purchasing from us, but it's way beyond that. It has to start with the loyalty first. We are oftentimes looking at them. We're looking at the customers and the clients. Wrong, <laughs> wrong. Turn it around, turn it around. It's the same thing when we talk about leadership. We talk about people following us. No, no. To be a leader is someone that is supporting others, someone that is guiding, someone that actually is, you know, when we talk about like a pyramid, right? We often think about, you know, the leaders at the top and then the, the you know, maybe the vice presidents and so on. And we see it as a pyramid where the actual customers is at the very bottom. No, flip it, flip it. It should be, the leader should be at the bottom supporting, right? This is the exact same thing. This is about looking at you. You're at the bottom. It starts with you. All of your business, everything that you're doing and the way that people respond to you, the way that your customers connect with you, the way that your customers interact with you, whether they purchase with you or they never purchase with you again, whether they want to talk to you all the time or they block you, it's all about you. The entire thing is about you the CEO of your business. Now, whether you call yourself the CEO or not, you're the creator. You are the creator of your business. And if you happen to be someone who is, um, you know, somewhere else in the organization or any organization, I want to really encourage you to see yourself as the CEO in all the actions that you take, because that is never going to impact you in a negative way. I don't mean that you're going out there making full on decisions or signing contracts. That's not what I'm talking about is you have the energy of being the leader that you own this company and that you treat it as your own. That is going to be a benefit. But I wonder how many people out there are actually like looking to what's not working and blaming, right? Whether you're the owner or you're an employee or you're anywhere in the organization, are you looking at what's not working and going into the, the blame and the victim energy? Or are you actually looking for where are our gaps? Where can we grow? What will, what can we do to create even greater? And it really always Number one, it starts with you. It's all about you. So when I talk about it's all about you, what I'm talking about is where are your values? Where, what are the principles that you stand upon? Do you even know? Do you know what you value in an organization? Do you know what your organization's values are? Do you know what the principles are that are deal breakers for you? Do you know what the principles are for your organization? 
that are deal breakers for your organization? Do you know those things? The, this, in knowing the values and knowing the principles are the foundation to create loyalty. They are the foundation to create loyalty. Knowing your values and knowing your principles actually will drive your choices. It will drive your actions and all of your choices and all of your actions are what are going to create or not loyalty with your customers. So we need to start with you and we need to look at what it is that's important for you and where you want to be in business. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are in business and if they started to dive into what it is that they desire about business and what it is they're willing to invest in their business. And they then brought that around their values and their principles. They may find that they don't actually want to be in business and that's okay. If you're a creator and you love to create different things, you maybe you're, you're a painter, maybe you are a sculptor, maybe you're something like that. And you, you really love to do that but your values and principles don't line up in a way that you can create loyalty, then perhaps you should be a third party provider of your product to a company that does want to create that, right? But that still is very important to understand that even if you're a third party provider, the first party provider will need to know that they have loyalty with you that you, that they can depend upon you and you can depend upon them. It's really about creating a relationship. And when you're creating a relationship of loyalty, it starts to change the game. 100% starts to change the game. So let's look at first, we're going to go to break in a couple of minutes, but I want you to think about some companies that you have loyalty to. What are, what are some of the company names that pop into your mind? What are some of the companies that you know you can 100% depend upon? Who are they? There are organizations out there that have tried to grow their company by adding different areas of services or different areas of products. And they, they branched so far off the mark of who they were and the loyalty that they had built with their, com their customers and clients, that they actually broke their business. They broke their business. It, it completely, they just crushed it. You know, there, there is, um, I forget what it's called in marketing, but there is a program where, you know, the, the, the life of a product will, will go, up, go on for some time and it will start to peak. And if there is not something of new interest that you're creating, it could die off. And then that's when then there's a secondary peak starts to come out and so on and so on as you maybe add to it or um, adapt to it. But then there are times where you will create things that'll be so far off the mark that your customers will be so confused. So loyalty, we need to look at your values. We need to look at your principles. And we need to look at your strategy within your organization, because the number one thing about loyalty is you need to be someone that people can trust. Do your customers and clients trust you? Are you someone that they can depend upon and that when someone asks them a question about you, can you trust that they will be able to articulate what type of an organization you have and what type of a leader you are. Do you know that? Can you trust that they will know that about you and convey that to others? Or are they confused? Are they confused about who you are and what you do? When we get back from this break, we're gonna dive more into the area of trust and what that can actually look like for you and what you can be doing and checking in on, is that what you are actually doing? And the areas that maybe there's a gap where you, it's a time to pay more attention to that. 
Okay, so you are listening to the Inspired Choices show. I am your host, Christine McIver. You can find us on the Inspired Choices Network at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or on any of your favorite podcasting or TV platforms. So stick around, my friends. When we get back, we're going to dive more into talking about customer loyalty and what the keys are for you. We'll be right back. Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Inspired Choices Show with Coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Hey, everybody. Welcome back from the break. So before we went on our break, we were talking about customer loyalty, and we started to dive into um, talking about trust and and how important trust is. And there's so many ideas that float in my head about customer loyalty. So stick with me because I might jump all over the place, but it'll all make sense eventually. So when we're talking about customer loyalty, we're talking about really about trust. That's the first thing, right? Now, when we trust someone, when when we think about trust, a lot of people will go into blind trust. Like, I trust you, I never worry about you, I nothing. Well, when you're actually in that space, is you actually put on blinders to what people are choosing, all right? And when we're talking about relationships, especially, we put on blinders to what they are doing. And no one should ever trust someone 100%. They should always be aware of what that person is choosing because we know 100% that people are making choices every single day and they can make different choices and there's no right or wrong. It's just what they're choosing. But if you're not keeping your awareness up around what people are choosing, then you might find yourself being in a place where you know, you're not happy with, or you might find that you're in a relationship, a personal or a business relationship with someone that they completely changed the game and it doesn't work for you anymore. But if you're not keeping your awareness up, that can actually end up costing you financially. It might impact your business. It might impact the relationship that you have with your customers and clients. It's so it's very important that you are very continue to be aware while you are cultivating trust with your customers and clients or with them with you. So I want to make sure you understand that very, very clearly. So one of the biggest things about trust and one of the biggest things that I want you to pay attention to is is people want to be able to know that they can count on you. People want to be able to know. That's That's what, you know, when we talk about trust in a relationship with a company, they want to know that they can count on you. So when you think about, okay, I need to get gas, 
like gasoline for your car, you know, you'll right away, there will be companies that will pop into your mind. And it might be somebody that's local near you, or it might be a company that you would go to um, that you would, <laughs> sorry, I just got a thought. It might be a company that you would drive to because they have created so much loyalty with you that you can trust them, right? And one of the things that I want you to keep in mind is we have a more intelligent, educated, and aware customer in the world today than we have ever had before. And it's the, it's the evolution of the internet. People are more well-read. They are more educated. They are communicating. People are putting uh, reviews in about organizations. A lot of people will go and check the reviews before they will work with an organization. These things, as an entrepreneur, don't be afraid of that. I want you to expand into that's great. Now, how can I create the relationship that all of those areas will actually be an advantage to me? So you can look at this as scared. Oh my God, what if somebody puts up a negative review? Or you can look at it as, okay, great. What can I do to contribute to my customers and clients so that I can show up and have a strong um have a strong customer following customer base that will show the world that I am someone to that is someone that they trust and someone that others can have loyalty to as well if they so choose it so coming back to um the trust and the and that building that um that loyalty when you think of a company like um uh when you think of a company like a grocery store different grocery stores will pop into mind and you will have had experiences great experiences in some and not great experiences in others so again you you know that people make their choices based on their experiences now i'm not talking about people always have to have a great experience all right i have been in business for uh, many many years now and part of my business is the Inspired Choices Network. And I have had hosts on my, on my, um, in my network that, you know, have had positive experiences and some who have had negative experiences. Now, do I look at those negative experiences like, oh my God, I don't want that to ever happen again. Or do I freak out or do, do I just like ignore them and put it away? A smart person, a smart business owner will look at these negative experiences that a customer has, and this is where their values and principles will hit the, the rubber will hit the road. This is where how they respond to a negative experience can actually cultivate greater loyalty or absolutely create the worst, worst possible advertisement for them. So how I have responded when people have had negative experiences, first of all, I don't avoid it. Now, do I want it to go away? Of course I do. <laughs> no, no customer or client wants to have a, a customer who has, um, sorry, no owner wants to have a customer or client who has had a negative experience. They don't want that on the books as it were, but it's going to happen. So you've got to embrace the fact that being in business is going to entail your ability and your capacity to communicate and to move through the challenges with honor and dignity. So the very first thing that I do is I reach out to that customer. When I've heard about it, a negative experience that they have had, I reach out to them personally, right? I, you know, I may have leaders within my organization that they will have the first conversation with, but when it's something that is very impactful in, in that relationship, absolutely 100%, I am going to personally reach out to them. So it's about cultivating that communication, that one-on-one -on -one communication with your customers and your clients. Now, of course, larger and larger organizations, the CEO is maybe not going to be speaking to every single solitary customer or client. Okay, but it's still on them to actually create a, um, an employee base that has the same types of values and, and principles that you as the owner have and that the organization has. It, that's critical so that you, the CEO, can trust them that they are going to act 
on your behalf. That's what a customer, that's what an employee does is they are acting on your behalf. So back to this, I will reach out to them and I will be straight up. I won't fluff it. I'll say we messed up, you know, or this is what went wrong. And then I will, you know, ensure them that we are taking action, that we are taking action to create that in a better way. I will ask them, what can I do? What can I do to make this better for you? What is it that you would suggest we do differently? You know, I will listen. I will listen to them. Do you listen to your customers? Do they know that they will have your ear when they have challenges? Right? That's where we can trust someone. That's where we can create the loyalty when we allow those customers and those clients to actually give us feedback in a way that makes it safe for them. Do they have to fight for your attention? Or do they have to actually leave? Do they have to actually go into a legal situation with you before they'll actually get your attention and get your, you know, you to follow through on what you said originally when you created this relationship with them? What is your, what are your values? What are your principles? What are the things that you follow through on in your organization? I worked for this really cool company. Um, it was the last company I worked for in the corporate world. And um, before I started my business, <clears throat> excuse me, and we had uh, our mission statement, we had our values up on the wall, like many do. And I've worked in a lot of different companies as well. And, you know, lots of them had them there that nobody knew them. In this particular organization, everyone knew them. It was a huge, huge plaque that was in every single meeting room. It was on all of the walls. It was brought up again and again and again in our meetings. Are we living these? Is this decision following um, our, our values that we stand by? It was something that we ensured when we were taking action that it was in alignment with our values. Do you know your values? Have you actually sat down and looked at that? Do you even know how to do that? Is that something that you need support on? If that's something you need support on, contact me. Christine at inspiredchoices.ca, send me an email and just say, I need support. I'm not sure where to begin. Happy to help you. And if you'd like to work with me to grow your business and, and cultivate this type of loyalty, absolutely, we can do that together in a safe environment. You know, many of us, when we start our businesses, is we are just peddling as fast as we can to create in order to generate income. And that's great, but you've also got to be mature enough to realize that there are a lot of things that you might have missed along the way in creating this organization, especially if you wish to grow lot bigger and bigger. I have invested a lot of time and a lot of money in looking at these areas for myself and for my business and what's important to me and what, what I would desire and where my company wants to grow. These things are crucial in order for you to continue to move your business forward. I remember when I worked at an organization, it was actually a, a, a very large hospitality organization. I was a human resources manager there. And one of the statistics that has stayed with my mind for so, so long is out of 20 people that will walk into a restaurant, 17 of those people will leave and not say one word about a poor experience that they had 17. Those 17 will walk down the street to your competitor in the future, or they will share that poor experience with someone that they know. Every single person that connects with your organization, every single solitary person that connects is an advertiser for you. And when you treat them in the way that they desire to be treated and that you're treating them with regard, that will begin to create that loyalty. You're not always going to be providing every single solitary thing that they want, 
but you want to create in a way in what you do, they want to, you want to create in a way that they are going to want to engage with you again and again. You may have um, a product or a service that you have created. And here's one of the big things. I'm going to just touch on it and we're going to go to our next break. But here's one of the big things is the reason that a lot of customers can do not have loyalty with an organization is because they are changing directions can constantly they're constantly changing directions and they're not someone that is consistent and consistency does not mean you have to stay stale that you have to just do one thing there's a big difference in this and this is what I want to speak to when we come back so you are listening to Inspired Choices here on the Inspired Choices Network. I'm your host, Christine McIver, and I look forward to having you join us again after the break. Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with coach Christine McIver, You'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know, but may not choose, that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Inspired Choices Show with Coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Hello again, my friends. Thank you so much for being here today. You are listening to myself, Christine McIver, here on the Inspired Choices Show on the Inspired Choices Network. And we're talking about cultivating customer loyalty. Now, the word cultivating that is a word that's in action, right? It's cultivating. And that is a continuous. To create loyalty is to be in a continuous flow of desiring to create loyalty with them. So it's continually cultivating, looking at your actions again and again. And that comes back to the point that, that I was talking about right before break. And it's about change, all right? Now, I speak about change all the time. Change is consistent. Um, you need to understand that change is going to happen. And when you have a solid values and principles underneath you and underneath your organization, those are the roots that no matter what's changing, that you're going to be solid with them. And as you're making decisions about change and you're making decisions about perhaps adding to the organization's um products or services, or you're looking about expanding in a new way, you want to come back to your values and your principles always. You want to always run it through that filter. Does it pass that test? Now, this is what was coming to mind is when, when, when people first start their businesses, and I will liken it to my business, and, and I'll refer to some of my clients' businesses. When I first started my business, and I had started in an area of HR consulting. That was what I had gone to school for. That was my area of study. And it was also my profession pr prior to leaving the corporate world 
right? That's what I did. I was in human resources. And so my thought naturally, I was going to go into HR consulting. Can I still do that work? Absolutely. As I began building my business and thinking about doing that, actually knocking on a company door and asking if I can be their HR consultant was not in alignment with who I was anymore. But what I did was I went and I looked at what was it about that job, about that career that I loved. So I started to pull out the things that I loved and they started to point me towards the direction of coaching. The coaching aspect was huge for me. And so I went and got my professional coaching training and that was what, you know, was kind of 50-50 with my organization, with my company as I started. And very quickly, that became primary for me. Now, HR work with it, uh, within an organization, I can always tap into that information for a customer, but my big area was coaching. So as I started to look at coaching again and again, people would say, well, what area do you coach in? And, you know, initially... I would say everywhere I can coach in all areas. That's not that that's untrue, but that actually did not assist my customers or my clients in understanding where my skill set was at and where it was that I could provide the most value to them. Now, I needed to go through that process. So if you're kind of a very new organization and you're kind of, you're just setting up shop and you're trying to figure out which direction you're going to go in, it's okay if you have a, a, a broader uh, base right at the moment that you're looking at. You got to kind of try it on to see what works for you, right? And that's okay. Allow yourself to go through that process. Now, as I went through that process and I started to see the areas that I loved, loved, loved to coach in, right? I started to narrow it down and I started to look at what it is that I really enjoyed. And time and time again, I would come back into the business area. So that is one of my primary areas that I coach in is strategic business actually is really looking at what's going on in the organization and setting up a strategy that really can help organizations and individuals to grow their businesses. So that's where I primarily am. Now it took time. Now, this is what I'm talking about, about the trust. My customers, my clients, they can trust that when it comes to business, I got them. They can absolutely trust. They can reach out to me. They can ask me questions in any area of business. And I will either support them with my own experience and professional knowledge, or I will find someone that will support them in areas that support me. They can count on that because I have been doing this now for 10 years. I have been focusing primarily, actually it's been longer than 10 years, it's probably 12 years. I've been focusing primarily in the business arena. And so they know time and time again, when they are coming to my shows, when they are coming to my podcast, when they are seeing what I'm offering, when they're seeing what I'm talking about, it's about business. So they feel safe in knowing, hey, do you know this individual? They will refer people to me. They will actually let people know that this is someone that they have worked with and they trust. Now, if I was to completely go off in another direction and do something completely different that had no connection to what I do today, that would absolutely confuse that would completely confuse my current customer and clients, okay? So there's two things that you wanna understand is they need to be able to count on what they know about you to, to that that remains true. They need to be able to do that. And then the second thing is, is that they need to know that when they refer someone to you, that they can trust that that refer, referral will be treated the same way that they've experienced being treated, right? People refer people all the time. That is your greatest, greatest um, business lead is through referrals. You want to nurture that. You want to continue to cultivate people referring you because that means that they are saying to someone else, you don't have to spend the time and the energy 
in cultivating a relationship with this person I'm referring you to, you trust me, I'm not going to refer someone to you that I don't trust. So you are creating a circle of trust when people are referring you, okay? So if you're completely changing the direction of your business, and this is the most important piece, you turn around and you throw away everything that you did in the past, you say, yeah, I don't do that anymore. I don't believe in that anymore. Whatever words that you are using, you are telling your customers and your clients that that, what you did, your, let me see if I can get the right words. You're telling your customers and clients that that was not really something you stood by. And you're telling them indirectly, even subconsciously, you're telling them that they shouldn't have trusted you because you don't believe in it anymore. I know someone um, who was very big in the spiritual world, huge, huge, huge in the spiritual world. And this person did a complete 180 with what they believed in. And every single solitary thing that they created for the last 20 years, they now stand up and say it was garbage. Oh my God. I would never trust that person again. I would never trust that person again from a, a provider, a, a service or a um, product provider. I would never trust them again that they wouldn't turn around and, and teach me something and then throw it all out the window. I actually took a course from this person. I took a course from this person and I started to integrate that into my business in a different line, not, not in business per se, in a different line of what I was testing out in those early years. And um, it now says to me that I invested in the wrong horse. I bet on the wrong horse. So do your clients believe that they're betting on the right horse with you? Do they? Are you willing to stand up and say, you can bet on me. I'm going to stand by this. This is something that is very important to me. This is something that I believe in. A lot of people will change directions. They'll do a 180 when they are not getting the results that they expect to get. And I understand that. I know that sometimes it can be very tough. But the fact of the matter is, is that most of those individuals have not looked at their values. They have not looked at their principles so that it's something strong that they can stand upon for themselves. And that then starts to energetically send out the message that they are someone that they can be counted upon. And that's where the loyalty really begins. When you are treating, when you are showing up again and again and again, when you show up with what you're saying, with where you are centering yourself, where you're centering your business, when you are showing up again and again and again in those same areas and people think of you, boom, in business. When people say that to me, it just lights me up. I have some customers that say, when I think of business, I think of you. And it's like, that is fantastic. How can I cultivate more of that? How can I create more of that within my organization? It doesn't matter what you're doing, but when you are consistently making choices that have you show up with the same message, with the same support, with the same product, then those people know that they can count on you. Now, if you're someone that suddenly you're doing something completely different and it's not about not having varied interests, it's not about having varied talents and capacities, but you cannot expect, I'm going to give you like a crazy example. So I do business and that's the thing that I do. And I added in the radio and the TV platform because that was something that I started to do and I love. And it's all about supporting business owners to grow as well, which is completely in alignment with my values and my principles of my business and myself. But if I was suddenly to throw in, you know, like I'm a painter, you know, I start, I have a, I have this craft that I can do and I, this ability and I, I start to paint and I start showing up with paintings on my, on my website. And I start showing up with paintings uh, online under my business profiles. It's going to create confusion. If that is something that you desire to do and you desire to make money from it, then you've got to start that business separate 
from your current business. And you've got to start cultivating that under separate profiles. You've got to start cultivating that, that customer base brand new, because otherwise you're going to run the risk of confusing your current customers and clients, and you're going to start to break loyalties because they are not going to be able to trust what you're doing as something that they can count on again and again. They actually can start to worry that, you know what, I've always gone to this company, I've always gone to this individual for these things. Now it looks like they're doing something different. I don't know if I can trust them anymore. You put question in their mind. And that is not something you want to do because you don't want to break that trust. So you really want to look at this. Does it make sense? Does it make sense to have those under the same umbrella? Or is it something that it would be actually a negative with your current customers and clients? That is critical for you to look at. All right. So change is consistent. Yes. Varied interests are, are absolutely going to happen. And you, you want to have varied interests. Does it make sense for those varied interests to be part of the same umbrella under the same business? Does it fit with your values? Does it fit with your principles? And what's the reaction going to be from your customers or your clients? I've got a couple of tips for you when we come back from this next break. Stick around, my friends. You're listening to Christine McIver here on the Inspired Choices Show on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back. Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Inspired Choices Show with coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the show. Today, we're talking all about customer loyalty. So if you're just joining, if you're just starting to listen, I really encourage you to go back and listen to the whole piece. We're talking about whether your clients or your customers would swear allegiance to you and what that would actually look like and mean. Um, we talked about you are cr the creator of your business and it all starts with you and it all starts with, comes back to you again and again and again. This is very, very important. We've also talked about when you're creating a loyalty, a relationship of loyalty, it changes the game. It's going to change how your customers and your clients actually interact with you. People want to trust you and they won't start working with you until they can trust you. And building trust starts with being consistent, consistent in showing up with who you are and what you do in the world and what you provide. It's also about looking at areas that 
you know what, need assistance or areas that aren't working or problems that, are, how do you show up in the tough times? How do you show up when they need your support? Are they someone that can come to you and say, look, this isn't great. I, this is the experience I had. Or are you someone that ignores them and just fluffs them away? I had an experience this very week. Somebody referred me to this company and I had a challenge with this company. First of all, they were hard to get a hold of. They were, their hours of operation were poor. Their, their accessibility was poor. And then when I finally did get the product that I had paid for, that I had to pay for in advance, by the way, they had not followed through on their job. And then when I said, look, this is a problem. They said, oh, sorry, that was our fault. Sorry, sorry. And I said, why did that happen? They never gave me an answer. I'm not going back to them again. No way. No way will they get my business in the future. So you've got to be willing to, yes, he, this person owned that they made the mistake, but they did not create a conversation with me or create, cultivate uh, an, a relationship in which I feel safe and I can trust that they will speak to me and tell me what they're going to do about this differently going forward. You know, we learn to grow in our companies through challenges with our customers and our, our clients. But if you don't make changes, what are they actually able to trust? They're able to trust that you're not trustworthy. And that's not something that we want to cultivate. So what are you known for? What are you known for? And you want to create that customer loyalty from that aspect of what you are known for. What you want to do when you are looking to perhaps expand or perhaps add something new to your, to your offerings is talk to your best customers and clients that you have cultivated loyalty with. Ask them, put that, that through them. Say, look, if I was to do this, if our company was to do this, tell me your first thought. Tell me what that says to you. Tell me how you would experience that. That's where you're going to learn. Don't cultivate, don't create in a, in a silo by yourself. Engage with the base that you have today. That's going to tell you a lot about what they can, they can count on or what your customers or clients, what the response and the reaction that they're going to have as well, right? You want to ensure that your customers and your clients know who you are. They know that you stand by and you're consistent in what you're doing and how you treat them. You want to ensure that they know they can trust you to show up again and again and again. You're not going to completely change what you're doing. Well, my very first business was a skincare and makeup company that I was... 21 years old when I started in that business and I am still I still sell that skincare and that makeup just mainly to family and friends now but I can count on that company being consistent they haven't completely changed their game uh, one of the companies out there I'm not going to name them but they they sold makeup. They're, that was their primary business was makeup. And I remember my sister sold it when I was very, very young. I used to have a lot of fun with it. Well, because their business started to wane and other companies were growing and grabbing more of the market, they decided they were going to add completely different things to their, to their brand. They added clothing. They added jewelry. They added all sorts of things. They created customer confusion. Customer loyalty will not grow when you're creating customer confusion. You want to make sure people can count on you and what you're going to do. So I'm really grateful that you're here today. This is a very critical conversation that we need to be having again and again. Again, reach out to me, Christine, at inspiredchoices.ca if you would like to have support and have, grow your company in a very strategic way. Next week, you can join me. The show we're going to be doing is change the course of your success. Change the course of your success. We're going to be talking about success and what it actually takes to continue to grow. Until next week, my friends, take really good care of you. Take good care of your business. And remember, no matter what, you can always make another choice. Until next week. Bye for now. <laughs> See you soon. 
Thank you for choosing to listen to Inspired Choices Radio Show. Christine McIver will return next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, be willing to choose what you really desire. This is your life, making the choices that bring you all that you desire.